Hey, I'm Stephen and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So some huge news over the weekend, so massive in fact that I needed to cancel plans with both your mum and your sister to pay close attention to what's going on. One of the biggest milestones in the history of Tesla. And no, this isn't hyperbole, I'm dead serious. Tesla dropped their latest version of full self-driving beta, version 9, which is relying on pure vision. Now, as I've discussed previously, Tesla has recently removed radar. They're no longer relying on this unnecessary technology. Tesla is now swinging around their gigantic engineering balls and brains and relying on pure vision. This is one of the most bullish signals in terms of Tesla's confidence in their ability to solve autonomy. And the release of full self-driving beta to around 2,000 people is going to cause an exponential increase in the capabilities of this software over a very short period of time. In short, the robo-taxis are just around the corner. So in this video, we'll look at the good, the bad, and the ugly of FSD Beta 9, Tesla's mind-blowing real-world AI. And I'll also talk about the implications, particularly from a Tesla stock investor's point of view. Actually, f*** it. I'll tell you guys the implications from a stock investor's point of view right now. Are you ready? <laughs> Spoiler alert, Tesla stock is going to the f***ing moon. Now, there is a caveat here. 99.9999999% of people in the stock market today approximately have literally zero understanding of artificial intelligence even less of an understanding of neural networks, even less of an understanding of deep learning. And that means that it's going to take quite a while for investors to actually understand the implications of what's going on here, which means, in my opinion, there is an enormous buying opportunity because here's what's going to happen. You know what? I'm going to illustrate this point by showing you where I think Tesla stock is on the Amazon stock timeline. So this is the Amazon stock price chart over all time. In 2006, around here, Amazon launched their Amazon Web Services product. However, this flew under the radar for quite some time. As far as I'm aware, the revenue actually generated from Amazon Web Services wasn't separately disclosed for years to come. The equivalent point in Tesla's timeline, this is when they first began putting all of their hardware and sensors necessary for full self-driving in every one of their vehicles. Back in 2016, half a decade ago. The release of full self-driving beta puts us around here. It's quite evident to those who can extrapolate into the future that Tesla's software revenue floodgates are about to burst open. As Tesla Vision, Tesla's real-world AI, continues to improve at an exponential rate, adding more features and functionality, becoming safer and safer and safer, and then ultimately becoming so safe that humans no longer need to monitor the software whatsoever, can literally fall asleep in their vehicle, be driven safely from point A to point B without having to pay any attention. That's the point where the stock market's going to go, oh, shit, huh, they did it. They actually did it. So. We're somewhere around 2015 on the Amazon stock timeline. As the stock market began to realize the implications of Amazon Web Services, which enormously boosted Amazon's overall profitability, not just revenue, but profitability. This is the profit center of the entire company at this point in time. The stock headed to the fucking moon. And in my opinion, this is exactly what's going to play out with Tesla stock in the coming years as people realize they've actually done it. They've actually solved autonomy. There's two parts to this. The first part is more consumers actually deciding to purchase the software package, which today is a $10,000 upgrade, pure profit to Tesla. If you're selling a $50,000 vehicle with a $10,000 upgrade, that's about a 20% additional margin out of thin air. As this software becomes more capable, more users purchasing Tesla vehicles will either purchase it at the time of buying their Tesla or subsequently purchase in the future. And of course, Tesla will soon release the monthly subscription model as well, which is going to turn on a huge amount of ongoing recurring revenue, which is almost pure profit. But the second piece of the puzzle here, that happens somewhere along our timeline here, the robo-taxis awaken. We're going to see two potentially huge step shifts in the value of Tesla as a company on the back of their full self-driving software. The first is as more consumers realize how capable the software is and choose to purchase, meaning every vehicle sold from Tesla ends up being much more profitable to the company. Like I said, a $10,000 software upgrade that's pure margin on a purchase price of say $40,000, $50,000 is hugely significant and has never before been seen in the automotive industry. This is going to cause a massive re-rating of Tesla stock in my opinion. You know in 2015, 2016 there were people that were saying Amazon's just an online store and today there's people that just claim Tesla is just a car company. Yeah, exactly. And once robotaxis begin driving users around from point A to point B, Tesla's going to be taking a cut of every one of those fares and also in the process probably put Uber and Lyft out of business fairly quickly. And the reason that I'm outlining this now in detail, I'll be honest, it's quite a selfish reason. I plan on clipping this video in about five years time and going, hey guys, remember when I predicted this was going to happen? <laughs> it happened. 
So let's get into the video. If you love crypto, stocks and free stuff, or just want to help out the channel, check out these great offers. BlockFi are launching the world's first Bitcoin rewards credit card. People in the US can earn 1.5% Bitcoin back on every purchase with no annual fee using the BlockFi Bitcoin rewards credit card. Check out the link in the description. And for a limited time, you can get up to $250 in crypto bonuses when funding a new account on BlockFi where you can use cryptocurrency to earn interest, borrow cash and buy or sell crypto. If you want your free crypto, use the link in the description. And if you'd like up to two free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. If you open a new account, you'll get one free stock valued up to $300 just for opening an account. And if you make an initial deposit of $5 or more, you'll get a second free stock valued up to $2,000. Seriously. Free stocks? Yes, please. And finally, if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also linked in the description. Thanks so much for your support, guys. Let's get back to it. Okay, so the first clip we're going to watch is full self-driving beta version 9, relying on pure vision, no radar, navigating an absolute nightmare of a construction zone. And one thing I want you guys to pay attention to, especially if you're into details, is watch the tracking of the actual cones here. Because in the past, what I've noticed is the visualization has a really hard time of tracking exactly how many cones are around the place. That we're jumping all over the place, the numbers aren't exactly accurate. What I notice in this clip is a stunning, real one-to-one -one mapping of the number of cones and their positions versus in the past, it was a lot vaguer and a lot less clear and a lot more jittery. And as we watch this clip, just one note to pay attention to as well. The visualization of the car actually shows a lot of what's behind the vehicle as well. So you might notice a few cones and think, hang on a minute, they're not where they're meant to be. But pay very close attention because what you're seeing visually when the cones are next to the car in the UI, that's where they're actually next to the vehicle and they'll no longer be visible. So let's watch this. Far so good. Thank changing lanes to follow the route, but it's full of cones. I don't know exactly what it's planning. <laughs> Sometimes it just does that, I think, to keep you on your toes. Kind of in the middle of the road. I don't know. This is not the easiest thing to navigate, I don't think. But it's doing great. Continuing to want to signal left. Um, a lot of lines here. Uh, now, just want to point out, that was an extremely impressive maneuver. The vehicle paying complete and utter attention to where it can drive versus the actual road markings which are no longer valid in this particular situation. Let's watch that tiny clip again. Very impressive stuff. Remember, this is acting like a human driver would. Um. We can see the car in the UI acknowledging where the actual lane markings are, but voluntarily, willingly and intentionally ignoring them. This is really great to see. A lot of lines here. That was an extremely impressive clip. Tesla's pure vision handled that like an absolute champ. In fact, I'd say at least as good as a learner driver would have gone, if not better. Imagine what would happen if a Waymo or a cruise vehicle found its way to that construction zone. I know exactly what would happen. It'll pull over and go, please hold me daddy, I'm scared, I don't know what to do. And remember, this is in beta. The whole point of having this release to around the 2000 users testing this software is to rapidly iterate and improve even further. And going through these types of edge cases where you're not actually able to follow the road markings themselves, but need to follow the cones, this is a great way to improve the software. You guys may have also noticed that truck in front, the lead truck actually kicked up some dust causing a little bit of occlusion and the visualization of the truck remained on screen the entire time. Another great example of pure vision being more than sufficient without radar being necessary at all. And now we're going to breeze through a few even shorter clips. Next clip here from My Tesla Adventure. Shout out to Eli. Hope you're doing well, brother. See you again soon. So we're going to watch this software handle a roundabout. And before we get into this, I just want to give you guys a little bit of a primer on what we're seeing in the user interface. These red markings, as far as I understand, are no-go zones. This is the edge of the drivable space. White lane markings here, fairly self-evident. Blue dotted line here indicating the car's intended path. And purple here denoting a median strip. 
Obviously, generally speaking, when there's clear lane markings, we have very clear visualizations on the user interface as well. If the car becomes a little bit less confident, you'll find that these sharp colors fade a lot, a little bit more ambiguous. I think this is a great way of representing how confident the vehicle is in what it thinks it's seeing. Approaches the roundabout cautiously. And then it goes. It even changed lanes coming out of the roundabout. Now, I think what I've noticed here in the UI, a blue path is like, yep, we're definitely going here. The white dotted lines is, I think we're going here. And once the confidence goes, yep, we can go here, then it turns blue. All right, we've got a car next to us in this roundabout, so that'll be interesting. Yeah, we stayed in our lane line. Wow, that's pretty good. Again, Tesla software handling the situation like a boss. Of course, with clear lane markings, this is fairly expected. I don't want to go out on a limb here too much, but I suspect that full self-driving software is going to have more challenges in areas where there aren't extremely clear, clean, and crisp lane markings. I think we're going to see more challenges when we get to nighttime and or areas with less than perfect lane markings. So let's have a look at some of those situations now. What up? This is a clip from HyperChange. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't help myself. Shout out to Gally. All right, let's see how it goes. Oh, what? Is it going to get gutsy and take a right on red? No way! <laughs> Whoa! Wow! Crushing it! Right on red? <laughs> I mean, that was, that I feel like was way doper than 8.2. Like 8.2 might have tried that, but it would have taken forever and been super jerky. I'm not looking at the visualization because I'm looking at the real world. So I can't look at the real world and try and figure out what the car is thinking at the same time. <laughs> oh, I don't like that. Holy. So it clearly, honestly, not jiving well with the monorail. Whoa! All right. <laughs> so it doesn't even see, it, doesn't it just see doesn't see these columns perfect example of why this software is fsd b e t a not wide release now i can't be certain there but it certainly looked like the car was not noticing those pillars but this is the whole point of deploying the software to around 2,000 people to test and iterate this is now an edge case tesla can use to train their full self-driving software to get even better at these types of situations like i said i promised you guys the good the bad and the ugly and now back to daylight to some extremely tight, narrow streets full of pedestrians and congestion. This video from Kim Paquette. Yeah, it didn't like that person close to the road. It seems to be swerving to get away from the pedestrians. Just want to jump in here. This is something that I personally do when driving as well. Given how dumb the average person is and the fact that that's only the average and there's people further along the bell curve than even that, I like to give pedestrians who can be a little bit unpredictable, obviously, especially children, but generally speaking, all pedestrians, a little bit of extra space just in case they do something incredibly dumb or not even dumb, but say, for example, trip over. Imagine that. Imagine you're being the driver. You're driving along and somebody trips over their shoelaces, falls in front of your car and you run over their face because you didn't give them enough space. So I actually like to see that full self-driving beta is doing this. I would actually be kind of concerned if it wasn't. That would be a major safety concern. Like I said, most times, not a problem. But in those one in a thousand, one in 10,000, one in 100,000 events, like I said, for example, someone literally just trips over or a mentally ill person pushes somebody out into traffic, you can have a major problem if the car's not giving space. So I really, really like to see this. Surprised my car didn't react to that car that was nosing out. I actually noticed the same thing. Great observation there from Kim. You guys will notice this car on the left in white begins pushing out into the intersection before Kim's car is even close to past it. Yet the car unperturbed. This is obviously a real world situation. This kind of stuff happens a lot, but it's interesting. This software is seeming a little bit, shall I say, intelligent shout out to the term artificial intelligence this is really really stunning to see not only the fact that the software is giving a little bit of extra space to pedestrians but the fact that it barely reacted to this is a great example of handling a real world situation without being overly cautious i can't emphasize how incredibly important this moment is i'm sure a lot of people watching like dude what are you talking about man there was lots of mistakes blah 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 blah, blah. it's not perfect but the whole point is tesla vision right real world ai is now deployed to thousands of vehicles in the real world 
and is acting intelligently. Admittedly, it's not perfect, but the whole point of having this beta version is to improve and iterate rapidly. All of these edge cases and interventions get sent back to Tesla to train the software to become even better. We're at the very beginning of a huge exponential increase in the capabilities of this software. I take you guys back to the beginning of this video on the Amazon stock price chart. We're around 2015. This is a watershed moment for Tesla. The fact that Tesla now has the confidence to literally remove radar from their hardware stack and rely on pure vision, and the fact that this pure vision software, Tesla AI, Tesla Vision, is literally deployed to thousands of vehicles right now, all throughout the United States, each of them collecting data, moving through tough scenarios, capturing edge cases, and allowing the software to iteratively improve at a really rapid rate, puts us at the beginning of an exponential improvement in the capabilities and safety of all self-driving. I know for a fact that the stock market overall will have absolutely no idea what's going on right now, and I'm sure there's a few basement-dwelling, self-hating adult virgins at Tesla Q who right now are trying to clip all the mistakes that full self-driving software is making in this beta release to go, ha ha, look, it's never going to work, failing to understand that the whole point of releasing this to a number of people to test is to improve it. This is truly one of the most important moments in Tesla's history. The robo-taxis are just around the corner and no one sees them coming. If you've made it this far through the video and you haven't already watched both of my recent Tesla AI videos featuring the presentation from Andre Kapathy, what are you doing? I'll put a card in the corner to one of these videos. It's really important if you own Tesla stock or are even thinking about investing in the company that you understand this. Stage one of Tesla was automotive. Stage two is energy and most people are still asleep to that. Stage three, the biggest and most important piece of the puzzle, the engine that is gonna drive Tesla throughout this decade and beyond, is artificial intelligence. Tesla today is transforming themselves into one of the world's leading artificial intelligence companies. And full self-driving is their flagship product. And until you hear analysts on Wall Street universally referring to Tesla as an AI company, talking about Tesla's artificial intelligence capability, their real world AI, Tesla Vision, in my opinion, Tesla stock still presents a stunningly undervalued investment opportunity. Don't say I didn't warn you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Are you guys excited to see FSD Beta, the progress that Tesla's making? And if you guys have any links to really interesting clips of FSD Beta out and about, whether it's doing a great job or a really terrible job, please put those in the comments below. I'd love to watch them all as well. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget the BlockFi Bitcoin Rewards credit card where you can earn 1.5% Bitcoin back on every purchase. There's a link in the description. You can also earn up to $250 in crypto bonuses when funding a new account on BlockFi, also linked below. And finally, don't forget your free stocks with Weeble and Stake, also linked in the description. These great offers also help out the channel. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again.